Welcome to your astrological forecast for the week of Monday, May 20th through Sunday, May 26th, 2024. This week, things are indeed very much changing, and I'm actually so excited to sit down and do this forecast with you because I actually have some like really fun, like good news to talk about. And I think a major theme for this week is that, um, how do I put this? Like, I think it's pretty natural that when you've endured a very like stressful or intense experience, once things do eventually lighten up, it's very natural to like cling on to that darkness, the intensity. And, you know, it is true that that intensity is still there to some extent. However, I would really challenge you to lighten up this week. I'm challenging myself as well. Let's all let's all just lighten up this week a little bit. We have the transits here to do that. And that's what I'm so excited to talk to you about. Um, but first, I do need to mentioned this cluster this cluster that i've been talking about for months i feel like i've been talking about this all year um yeah we still do have this cluster here that you can see mainly in aries and taurus we still have uh north node mars and chiron in aries that's only three placements though so that's not it's not like completely dominating the chart um like it was before and then we also have um as we start the week mercury uranus venus and jupiter in taurus but that is about to change we have multiple planets entering gemini this week and that's what i'm so excited about and i know that you know obviously our experience in as individuals within each sign and each transit is of course different you know one transit that might be really awesome for one person might be different for another person and that depends on their astrology okay we get that we understand that however I do approach these forecasts as objectively as I can. And even through that like objective lens, I still think these Gemini transits are exciting because we've experienced so much Taurus, so much Aries. These are awesome energies. Don't get me wrong. I love a good Aries transit. I love a good Taurus transit. This was phenomenal when it came to starting things. But like, I'm sure there must be some area of your life that has been radically transformed. Okay. And that's very powerful. You know, we went through Aries where that was that initiating energy starting something new you know being brave putting ourselves out there and then we went through taurus which is so awesome and so necessary for grounding you know whatever began you know let's like set some roots down and and build a foundation right um but now you know we are entering a new stage of the cycle we are entering gemini season and i'm just gonna say it so this is the chart for monday may 20th this is the day where sun leaves Taurus and enters Gemini, where it will reside for the next month or so. And again, you know, even viewing this objectively, I still think this is exciting because I think this is exactly what we need. So much Taurus, so much Aries. Those were two very different energies, but with the one commonality, I think, in my opinion, that the Aries and Taurus transits have uh, between each other is that they're both very intense. <laughs> They're both so intense, and, and I think when you have so much fire and so much earth, um, it can be very serious, right? Um, so that's where I think we really need some Gemini energies. Like, let's just be silly and kind of have fun. Let's loosen up a little bit. Um, not only is that necessary, like, for our mental health to have a little fun every now and then and be silly and maybe be open to new experiences, to learning, etc. That's what Gemini is all about. Not only is that, like, fun, it's a good time, it's necessary for our health, but... Um, it's necessary to survive <laughs> you know you can't be too rigid and that is you know one commonality that aries and taurus have together aries is great for like pioneering and starting new things as i mentioned uh taurus is great for you know grounding um but they, they're both very like stubborn energies right so that's i think that's part of why things have been so intense lately uh but bringing in this gemini energy it'll help us to kind of loosen up let's be playful and silly and again not only is that fun it's necessary to survive we gotta branch out we gotta diversify it's necessary in a changing world okay um yeah and i don't, honestly don't even know where to go from here um there was one thing i wanted to mention before i get further into this forecast what was it oh right so okay a major theme that we're seeing this week but really this is a major theme that we're going to see this year in general is that as i've mentioned many times We've had such an intense cluster. We've This has been the, the biggest cluster that I've seen in, you know, ever since I've been into astrology, I've never seen a cluster like this. 
Um, you know, and as I mentioned many times, this cluster was centered around Aries and Taurus. What we're going to see as we get deeper into this year is that this cluster will spread out. And this is natural. This is what has to happen astrologically. If you have everything clustered in one part of the zodiac, all these planets and points and whatnot that we're looking at right now, they're all traveling at different speeds. Okay, so if they're all clustered in one part of the chart at a certain time, it's only natural that we're going to eventually see everything spread out. Okay, and um, I'm actually tempted to like jump forward a couple months just to sort of uh, illustrate my point. Let's I don't know if I can even do this. Let's just jump forward a couple months. I was just looking at the chart for September for some reason because I, I, I'm I getting these downloads lately. I feel like something intense is going to happen in September. Um, but if you look at the chart for September, everything's pretty spread out. You know, it doesn't look at all like the chart does right now, in my opinion. So so this is my point. We're going to see things kind of gradually spread out and diversify. And this week is a huge turning point when it comes to exactly that because on Monday, we've got Sun entering Gemini. So it's, again, it's bringing in some like light, airy energy. It's also interesting that on Monday, Moon is also in Libra. So Sun entering Gemini, Moon in Libra. We're getting so much air energy, which we really haven't seen. There's been so much Earth and so much fire, as I mentioned. A little bit of water with Neptune and Saturn and Pisces. But really not a lot of air energy. Pluto's been the only air planet. Um, so that really dramatically changes as we start the week here. Um, yes, moon in Libra, <clears throat> sun entering Gemini. Again, you know, these are air air energies. Sun and moon, both in air, air signs. So so air signs are detached, right? That's like the main <clears throat> the main um trait, I think, with air signs. Detached, intellectual. Um, I don't I just I don't know. They can sometimes come across as serious. I just don't feel like they take things as seriously. In you know, Gemini and Libra in particular are extremely flexible these are some of the most flexible signs of the zodiac they're very adaptable they see every angle they see every side to everything and that's what allows them to be so some might call them two-faced but at the same time you know they genuinely see both sides you know of the equation both sides of any problem or story whatever it is um so so that's what we're going to be experiencing at the start of the week you know challenge yourself to be adaptable and again i really do think that this may actually be a challenge for many of us because um, that's just, this just hasn't been where the energy's been. You know, this looks very different than, than what the energies have been like, um, the past couple of months. It's been so intense, so serious and so focused. Okay. That is completely different than this chart. This is not, this does not look focused to me. This looks again, playful, silly, you know, let's have fun. Let's have some good conversation. Let's try something new. Um, let's, I mean, this is also very intellectual energy as I kind of, I think I brushed up on that word maybe. Um, yeah, Gemini and Libra, they love to overthink everything. Let's get, you know, really mental, pun intended. You know, let's, um, I don't know, let's have good conversations. Let's learn what else. You know, Gemini and Libra also really both enjoy, what is even the word? Like, they they're, they both want to be socially intelligent. They really enjoy, like, refined mannerisms. And, you know, they're, they're very attentive to, like, the social etiquette and things like that and and maybe that goes along with like you know paying attention to all the rules and stuff but sometimes it's fun to break those maybe in like a silly or artistic kind of way does that make sense um anyway so monday it's a huge change uh technically speaking in the northern hemisphere we're entering the third trimester of spring that is i know that sounds kind of weird but that's that if you kind of break it down that's what gemini is that's what gemini season is it's the last third <clears throat> of spring in the northern hemisphere um so this is the time where you know it's technically still spring for the next month but it's gemini it's a mutable sign you know we're kind of if you pay attention to like the weather and the energy and things like that if you do live in a place that ha even has seasons because some of us don't but um for many of us you know the the weather the climate is like shifting you know one day it's like spring the next day it's like summer you know that's kind of it's, it's a very direct um analogy i guess you could say uh, for Gemini, that's what makes Gemini so adaptable because it's centered around this transition from the first uh, quarter of the zodiac, which is spring. It's transitioning. It's 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 not yet summer, but it's like alluding to summer. Um, we're basically transitioning from these first three signs, which are all about you know the self and you know the identity. These have been very individualistic energies that we've been dealing with. 
Um, we are gradually transitioning from that and branching out into themes that have more to do with family and service to others. That's what the summer signs deal with, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Again, we're not there quite yet, but Gemini is like making the way. It's 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 paving the path or, or whatever, <laughs> making room for um, these summer like family oriented signs. Gemini is all about branching out and realizing, oh, you know, I've maybe i've worked on myself a lot and i've started these new projects but it's so exciting to realize oh there's other people out there too that have their own projects how can we you know what does that interaction look like that's what gemini is all about so that's what we're going to be dealing with for the next month or so okay thursday there's a lot to talk about um and i'll, I'll try not to ramble on too much some of you like that though Okay, Thursday, May 23rd, there is a full moon in Sagittarius, which honestly, I'm just so grateful for. Literally, like, I've had the charts be uh, larger, if you can see that. I've had it look like, looking like this lately because cause there just hasn't been anything going on on the other side of the chart. Um, so I'm so grateful for this full moon that I have to... Um, I know that's kind of a weird way to approach it, but I'm so grateful that this full moon... You know, there's something happening on the other side of the chart. I Honestly, I've been a little bored talking about, like, these Aries and Taurus stelliums for months. Okay, so I'm happy we have something else to talk about. And and I'm also happy because this is another example of this is this looks like silly energy to me. This looks fun, this looks adventurous. It can be very intellectual as well. You know, let's learn something, let's learn from the experience. But um this is all about, you know, life is a journey. That's that's what this whole moon looks like to me. And let's break it down. So why do I say that? Um as I always lecture or lecture, as I always say a full moon, or, or honestly, really any lunar aspect, it's not just about the moon. It's about the moon's relation to the sun. The sun is just as relevant um, when we're talking about the moon as the moon itself is, in my opinion. And um, so here, for example, there, we have a full moon at, my notes show two degrees Sagittarius. Yes, that is correct. Excuse me. Um, okay, so full moon at two degrees Sagittarius, that means that the moon is opposing the sun, which will be at two degrees Gemini. Okay, so it looks like this happens early in the day, Eastern Standard Time, somewhere in the AM. Honestly, the exact time is not, it doesn't really matter because this, the full moons are large events. We all know that. Even people that don't follow astrology understand that full moons are kind of a big deal. Something happens, we all get a little crazy, rowdy, rambunctious. Uh, I always say children and pets in particular are like bouncing off the walls it's very true they do this every week whenever there's a quarter moon or a full moon maybe new moon maybe not as much on a new moon <clears throat> but anyway full moon you know it's like that peak of lunar energy I, I feel like you don't need me to explain to you what a full moon is i think we all understand that um but but this one in particular full moon in sagittarius so this is it's 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 I don't, how else can I explain it? It's it's a full moon in Sagittarius. We're really experiencing a lot of this. It's an injection of Sagittarius energy, which again, I think that's really what we need. And moon is opposing the sun in Gemini. And the sun is very freshly, very newly in Gemini. You know, the sun just entered Gemini on Monday and then already we get this full moon. Um, so this is dramatic. This, I mean, this could be intense just in the sense that there's like so much energy and, you know, there's more stuff happening, which I think most of us don't need that right now. But again, this, this looks like party energy to me. This looks fun. Um, you know, we're really exploring the Gemini Sagittarius pull out, po whoa, po polarity, duality. I combined polarity and duality. Uh, we're com we're exploring this axis right now, and whenever we have you know opposing signs, opposing placements like this, they are opposite, you know, very literally. But um, but at the same time, there are some themes that connect these two opposing signs. So what do Gemini and Sagittarius have in common? That's that's one way of looking at this full moon. So um, they're both mutable signs. They're both intellectual. But again, they're also I think like two of the most fun loving signs. They both want to learn and just have experiences just for the sake of having experiences you know even if you have uh let's approach it this way so even if you have like a bad day or <clears throat> let's say you try something and it doesn't work it wasn't what you intended that's okay that's part of the journey because it's a learning experience which i know sounds kind of cheesy but i feel like that's how gemini and sagittarius like to approach things you know uh sagittarius in particular well really both of them um they have so much room to just explore and play around because at the end of the day, they're just learning to, they're, they're looking to expand their soul, expand their consciousness, expand their intelligence. And the only way to do that is by trial and error, experimentation. You know, let's just try things. Let's play, thing, play with things. 
let's have fun. You know, that's what we're here to do. And that's really part of my philosophy. You know, if there isn't fun in your life, how can you survive? I mean, maybe that's a spoiled way to go about it. But, it, you know, it's like we got to laugh at the end of the day, no matter how much pressure is there or, you know, I mean, that's really where I learned to laugh is like <clears throat> in the dark times, you know. So so again, this may actually be a challenge because I think many of us, <laughs> honestly, many of us have experienced so much in the past month or two. I've been talking about this, you know, marriage, divorce, uh, birth, death, like so many life events. And it is who like I don't know if anyone else works with the public at all or, or talks to people anymore. I know that's kind of old fashioned, but um, but yeah, there's been so much happening. I mean, where I am, there's like fires and, you know, people's houses are burning. You know, it's like, um, so anyway, the, the challenge is how, after all of this, you know, I think many of us are kind of like rigid. We're stressed, like our fingernails are like gripping onto the steering wheel, right? I'm not saying, you know, I mean, I think we can simultaneously like take things seriously and take, you know, the appropriate actions you know we can be sincere and responsible but at the same time also like laugh at ourselves a little bit right i think that's really what's necessary and that's the biggest challenge can you have fun can you be silly i you know many of us that are stressed may have this knee-jerk reaction of you know how can i have fun at a time like this when you know i have to do this and this and this relax i get it i understand there's a lot on your plate probably maybe i don't know there's a lot on my plate and there's a lot on many people's plate plates um that's okay you know it's good we're gonna be all right okay have fun enjoy the experience relax it's all just a big show at the end of the day do we have to take things seriously and take precautions of course we do you know we're surviving as best as we can but part of that surviving is branching out having fun trying something new being open to a different perspective okay let's branch out this isn't i mean i was gonna say this isn't tourist season anymore we do still have a bunch of Taurus and Aries placements. I'm not going to list them off for you. We do still have that. But but now we're kind of getting a little mix. We're getting a blend. You know, we still have this very initiatory, initiatory. I don't even know if that's a word. We have this like brave, courageous, you know, Mars, Aries energy. That's really fun. That's really sexy. We've got this like very practical, earthy Mercury and Taurus energy. But now we've also got this like silly, let's branch out, let's be detached. Sun and Gemini energy. I, which I think is very nicely complemented by this Sagittarius full moon. So <clears throat> anyway, I just rambled a lot. Um, but yeah, in short, fun, party energy. Let's be rowdy. Let's be silly, but also learn something, right? That's, I don't know. That sounds like a good time to me. I don't know about you, but okay. Um, also Thursday, really briefly. So let's take a little look at venus i don't know if you can see venus here she's at 29 degrees taurus uh on noon th thursday may 23rd uh noon eastern standard time venus is at the last degree of taurus and okay how do i approach this venus is busy today let's just put it that way v she's 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 busy okay um so first we have this venus jupiter conjunction at the last degree of taurus this is a big deal okay because uh, I mean, I think any conjunction is a big deal. It's the most intense aspect, in my opinion. It's the start of something new. Anytime any two planets, you know, anytime one planet passes any other planet, that marks a new cycle, right? So this is, you could technically say this is the start of the Venus-Jupiter cycle, right? But what makes this so intense is that these are the two benefics, okay? Venus and Jupiter and the Sun, you could say as well. They're all kind of clustered together in um, early Gemini, late Taurus on thursday they're all working their way to gemini that's like basically what's happening right <clears throat> so sun has already entered gemini this week we're gonna see venus and jupiter also enter gemini um and that's what's happening thursday but the reason why it's so complicated is because venus conjoins jupiter at 29 degrees taurus the last degree so we get this little burst of you know let's enjoy being sensual and practical let's enjoy some stability with you know venus and jupiter in Taurus. So it shows that we're really enjoying these like Taurian earthly pleasures, um, stability, etc. But these plants are on their way out. They're not going to continue to focus on Taurus. Venus conjoins Jupiter at the same, pretty much at the same time, Venus and Jupiter both sextile Neptune. Okay, I wish I could use my pointer, but it really doesn't work, unfortunately. I need to get my act together. Um, 
<clears throat> Venus and Jupiter from the last degree of Taurus make this sextile to Neptune. Okay, so this, uh, I don't know. In my opinion, this is really beautiful. I'm so glad I have some good, like, positive <clears throat> things to talk about <clears throat> for this. Because I, I don't, I don't, I don't always have <laughs> these good things to talk about. Um, Neptune is very much at home in Pisces, right? We all know that, especially the, you know, more modern astrologers, uh, which believe that, that Neptune rules Pisces. That is true to some extent. Um, and Neptune, but Neptune is like very much at home in Pisces. It's being sextiled by Venus and Jupiter and Taurus. Venus is at home in, in Taurus as well. Um, we really have a lot of planets at home right now. Neptune, Venus, Mars, even that's a lot in my opinion. Is that it? Maybe I'm missing one, but <clears throat> regardless, so Venus and Jupiter, the two benefics are like teaming up. They're having this conversation, this very intimate conversation at the end of Taurus, um, bringing in these like very harmonious spiritual kind of hippie vibes from um, Neptune, which is at the end of Pisces. Don't get too excited. Um, Venus and Jupiter are about to enter Gemini. Neptune is at the end of Pisces. Neptune is not, I don't believe Neptune's actually going to enter Aries until halfway through next year so don't get too excited about that we don't have like that many outer planets changing signs this week <clears throat> honestly i'm glad we don't because that would be intense and we don't need that um okay but anyway so yeah this is this basically when you put it all together this, this is harmonious harmonious spiritual it's more fun energy more pleasurable energy in particular for those of you that have major placements at the end of taurus or beginning of gemini You've got all three benefics, um, Venus and Jupiter in particular, but also the sun are kind of clustered around your neck of the woods if you have placements there. Um, so this is, you know, that would mean that those people have gone through some some rough, they've had it rough. A lot of us have had it rough, but them in particular, and they're about to get these blessings from these three benefics. Okay, so Venus conjunct Jupiter, both sextiling Neptune, and then within the same day, Venus will actually leave Taurus and enter Gemini. So that's where I say Venus is busy. She's she's with Jupiter. She's talking to Neptune. And then she says, okay, peace, guys. I'm I'm done with Taurus. Venus and Taurus was very nice. She was at home there. We really like, I think this was a great opportunity to center back. You know, what do I want? What, <laughs> what are my intentions? What do I find pleasurable? It's really good to center back to that. Even in this like narcissistic culture that we have. Yeah, although it's narcissistic, I think it is negative, though. Like, we're focusing... So many of us are focusing on what we don't want, okay? So it's good to come back, and that was that opportunity with Venus. I mean, really, every day is an opportunity to do that. But in particular, Venus and Taurus, what do I want? What am I here for? That's what we kind of explored. And then now, this is changing Thursday, as I mentioned, with Venus joining the sun in Gemini. Um, and let's just... let's Can I... Can I just throw the chart forward to illustrate this? I don't know. I don't know if that'll work. Let's try it. Yeah, so you can see here, even by um, 1800, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, you can see Venus has entered Gemini with... Oh, now my pointer's working. Okay, that's refreshing. Um, so yeah, what does this mean? I think it's pretty straightforward. Sun and Gemini, now Venus and Gemini. Again, it's, it's Gemini energy. Let's be silly. Let's have fun. Um... You know, with Venus and Taurus, we we're coming back to what do I want? Where are my boundaries? You know, it's very straightforward. It's very practical with Venus and Taurus. This is different with Venus and Gemini. It's practical in the sense that we're still wanting things that like make sense, right? Because this is a very intellectual sign. We want things that make sense. We want to learn. We want to be correct, factual. Um, but this is different than Venus and Taurus because <clears throat> rather than like just focusing on what do I want? These are my boundaries. It's very straightforward, clear cut this is different it's more experimental it's more silly right venus and gemini let's have fun let's just see what's out there let's go with the flow you know this uh, this is just i can rant and rave about this for days because this is i think this is exactly what we need you know rather than being so intense and like starting something new which honestly change in general is so i think it's so difficult it's, it's hard it's it's hard to start something new kudos to you aries out there you with major aries placements like i i can't do it i get fried uh being thrown in like a new world or a new environment it's just it's a lot for me it's a lot for many of us um so venus and gemini let's be silly let's branch out this isn't really the energy of oh let's just start something completely dramatically new this is more the energy of, you know, let's try something new. Let's be silly. Let's experiment. You know, we're not like completely rewriting like the whole system or 
you know, some of us, I was going to say, we're not changing our lives dramatically. That, of course, depends on your natal placements. But most of us, I don't think, really April was the time to change your life dramatically. Okay, many of us had major life events. This is more the time to, you know, let's make adjustments. Let's change things a little bit. Um, not in a completely dramatic way, but um, let's just implement things. Let's look at it from a different perspective. You know, let's enjoy some conversation, silliness, etc. I think I've talked more than enough about this. Okay, let's move on to Saturday, May 25th. So <clears throat> this is the day where now Jupiter enters Gemini. This is such a big deal. I don't know if you realize because... Um, because it's so rare to have all three benefics in the same part of the chart like this. Um, you know, the three benefics, you, if you listen to my forecast, you know what I'm talking about. So the sun, Venus, Jupiter, these are the three planets which they're just easy to work with. Okay. If you have a lot of sun, Venus and Jupiter energy, you're going to be like in a super sunshiny state of mind. Whether, and it doesn't matter whether we're talking natally or in this case with transits. These energies help us to look at the glass half full, okay? You know, um, and and to look beyond the glass. Let's have fun. What can we do with the glass? Okay, I think that analogy is exhausted, but these are fun energies. They're energies of, you know, like the richness of life, the fun of life. Um, these energies help us be like really vibrant and just, I don't know, they just help us have a good time. So this is a really big deal if you have major placements in Gemini in particular. This is going to be really fun for you. You're going to be the life of the party. And you probably need it because you had, in particular, like a really rough month. Okay. Um, but wh whoever you are, wh whatever your placements are, where is Gemini in your chart? Because that represents a part of your chart where there's going to be so much success and abundance for you. Okay. So that can look very different depending on your chart. Is that, you know, is it in your 10th house of career? That's where you're going to be having fun in public and with your career and really shining brightly there um is this your fourth house it's going to be you know at home with family you know that's where your fun and abundance is going to be um this is a really great opportunity to have fun to be successful to to just enjoy life to enjoy yourself and enjoy the energies um yeah again it just it just depends on what part of the chart it's in but uh, it is a really fun opportunity somewhere that's for sure Okay, but um, but yeah, another reason why this is a big deal is because Jupiter is an outer planet. Jupiter spends about a year in each sign, okay? So I think pretty much into anyone who's into astrology, we kind of like nerd out and we freak out whenever any outer planet changes signs because it's just relatively rare, you know? Um, it's not like the sun or Mercury, which enter signs like every month. That's like, you know, that's exciting too, but it, it happens every month. It's not a big deal. Jupiter though, Every, that, this only happens about once a year. Honestly, I think it's once every like 13 months or something like that, um, that Jupiter changes signs. But Jupiter, wherever Jupiter is at, it shows where the abundance is, the the fun, the, the good fortune, the success. It also shows where we can have excess sometimes. That's, you know, the downside of Jupiter, which there are very few downsides, but that's the main one. We can have too much of a good thing. Um, but for the next year or so, the abundance is going to be focused on Gemini, okay? So, um, so yeah, it's all about, in a weird way, it kind of fits Jupiter, right? Jupiter's at home in Sagittarius. Technically, Jupiter's in detriment in, in Gemini. So, you know what I say about detriment energies. They, they help us to look outside of the box, okay? And what better sign to do that with than Gemini? You know, let's, let's be fun. Let's be curious. Let's enjoy ourselves, but maybe in a different way. Let's be quirky, right? Let's see things from a different perspective. Let's be open to the unusual the obscure right if you're here you already get that because you're into astrology um but yeah that, i think that's what we're all kind of doing for the next year or so on some kind of level with jupiter in gemini but in particular for the rest of this month and much of june this is where we're really going to be immersed in these jupiter and gemini vibes because of the sun and venus's proximity so all all three of these benefics are shining a light they're bringing their warmth because all three planets, well, if you can call the sun a planet, which we do in astrology, get over it. Um, all three of these planets are very warm, like very literally. Okay. <laughs> Jupiter emits more heat than it takes in. Venus is like, I think the hottest planet in the solar system. And then the sun is obviously hot. I think we all understand that. These are warm, they're warm, fun energies. It's just, I don't know. This is such a good time in particular for Gemini, but also for everyone depending on where this 
lands in your chart okay so um yeah i hope you enjoyed this forecast i know this was a little bit long i was very excited so this was particularly rambly um but i think i got my point across this these are these continue to be exciting times and everything is indeed continuing to change um but again my if you take if you took any way oh my god i'm getting too excited if you take anything away from this forecast i hope that it's you know challenge yourself to lighten up okay and again i'm gonna do this too i'm gonna practice what i preach um because i myself have been a little serious a little glum lately you could say okay <clears throat> but let's challenge ourselves to lighten up let's have fun you know let's you know we can be jokesters we can have fun okay i understand that life is not completely fun in games like i just said there's fires here there's there's shit is going down in the world we know that um can we have fun though can we enjoy ourselves you know even in the worst of times, like there is some kind of humor there. I believe in, you know, spirit. I believe in God. I believe that um, these energies have humor to them. They're, the universe is playful. Okay. There is a kind of silliness to things if we're really paying attention. So that's how I see things. I don't know, but I hope you have a great week, whatever, whatever you believe in, wherever you're at <clears throat> physically, mentally, I hope you have a great week and I hope you tune in next week as we close out may and enter june so these continue to be very exciting times thank you for hanging out with me for this half an hour and i'll see you later